rock star. Every day I rock hard. I'm a motherfucking rock star. Every day I rock hard. I'm a rock star. Hi, rock stars. I'm Allie, a rock star bar girl. So before I begin, I want to give you a little bit of background on um, where I'm coming from in regard to my opinion on bartending school. Most of you probably know this, but for those of you who are new to the channel and don't know this, um, I have been in the hospitality industry for a little over 15 years, um, mostly in New York City, but a couple of years in DC as well. Um, I went to bartending school. Uh, before I started bartending. I had never worked in a bar or restaurant before um, and I went to bartending school in order to give myself a background in the knowledge that I felt was going to be necessary to do this job. I was very, very much pleased with my experience. Um, I had some really small jobs kind of starting out where I didn't really make too much money um, but um, I would say within about maybe nine months, um, definitely within a year of going to bartending school, um, I had worked my way up to uh, full-time employment, making a fuck ton, actually. <laughs> making a lot of money. For someone living at home with very little bills, I was making a lot of money. Um, so I had a good experience. I learned a lot. Um, I had a decent job placement program that was a part of the entire course that was offered. Um, after bartending for about five or six years, I um, was hired at a bartending school in the city that was different from the one that I went to. It was actually a competitor of the one that I went to. Um, and I taught there uh, for about three years. So unlike some bartenders who will shit on bartending school and tell you that it's terrible and you don't need it and you know it's not cool it's not the cool way to become a bartender blah 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 um i am one of the people um who doesn't take such an anti bartending school position in fact um i'm quite supportive of bartending schools and bartending courses um if it is uh good for you um, and i'm probably going to do um, a video about the whole anti-bartending school thing. Um, it is something that you see echoed by a lot of bartenders um, and I don't get it. And I want to talk a little bit about that because honestly it kind of confuses and bothers me um, when I see bartenders knock bartending school just because uh, they didn't go. Uh, but anyway, this video is not about that. This video is about you your decision to go to bartending school and how to protect yourself. Um, because um, unfortunately, uh, bartending schools, even though that is what they call themselves, um, are not typically institutions of education. And so um, they are not held to uh, the standards, regulations, or requirements that you would expect of an actual educational institution. Um, Bartending schools are a product um, that is sold to you. Uh, it's a product and a service mixed in one. Um, but it's not a school in the traditional sense. And so, uh, unfortunately, that means that really pretty much anyone can start one. It's sad to say, but there are um, scams out there. And I want to give you an idea of what you should be looking for from actual legitimate bartending schools um, and institutions because they really do exist and there are some really good ones out there. And I want to help you distinguish from the good and the bad apples. Tip number one, uh, first and foremost, is to decide whether or not bartending school is actually right for you. This is important because even if a bartending school is a totally legitimate organization, if you are not um, the type of person that would benefit from that particular type of education, then you are going to walk away from the experience feeling like you got scammed even if you weren't. 
what you should be asking yourself is what type of a learner are you? If you were the type of person in school, like in your actual school as a kid, who didn't like or do well in a school environment, then you're probably going to have a lot of those same frustrations in a bartending school because it's very similar to regular school, except that the topic, instead of math or science or English, is making drinks. And I don't mean that you have to have done well, like academically in school. You didn't have to necessarily have good grades in school for bartending school to be right for you. What I mean when I say do well in a school environment is if you are the type of person that doesn't like to sit still in a classroom for an extended period of time, doesn't like to take copious amounts of notes that are well organized and informational, if you don't like to take quizzes and tests or you find yourself disinterested in um, academic environments, then you're probably not going to enjoy bartending school regardless of how thorough the classes are or how experienced the instructors are or even how good the job placement program is. If you're the type of person that's totally bored or totally annoyed in a classroom environment, um, you're probably going to experience those same limitations and frustrations in a bartending school classroom. If, however, you are the type of person that actually really enjoys school environments, you like sitting in on lectures and classes, you like taking lots of notes and being organized and reviewing those notes at the end of your day when you go home, if you like taking quizzes and tests, then you will probably find a bartending school environment a lot more beneficial. If you go to bartending school and a school environment, regardless, is just not your cup of tea, you are probably going to walk away from the experience feeling unfulfilled, uneducated, unprepared, and a lot more likely to look at that bartending program as fraudulent in some way. Or to look at that program as having failed on their promise or failed to meet um, you know, the expectation that they originally gave you. Step two is to do your research. There are a couple of things that you can go and, and look up really easily online um, that should give you a little bit of information um, just into whether or not the program is like scammy, shady, up to no good, or things like that. Is the program a good program? That's something that will take a little bit more than just a cursory level of research. But whether or not the place is just like ripping people off and a front for something else and is totally not a legitimate uh, school or course of any kind, um, there is some things that you can do just online from your phone or your computer to help you figure out if there are any red flags. So uh, first of all, um, reviews. We all know that reviews are to be taken with a grain of salt, right? Um, we write reviews when we're pissed off and we're mad. We don't write reviews when we are happy and we've had a great experience. Um, so just because you go on um, a review site um, and you look up a, a school or association and you see that they have negative reviews, that doesn't automatically mean that the place is a scam or a fraud. Um, you want to read those reviews um, and take into consideration the types of complaints that are being made. Um, if someone is complaining that one of the instructors has a really bad attitude or um, job placement services weren't what they were expecting, and I'll talk a little bit later about why that's not a review that you need to be like really worried about. Um, things like that. Um, I didn't really love the location or... Um, the furniture, the barware uh, could use some updating, it was outdated or things like that. Um, things like that are certainly to be taken into consideration and you should. 
but they don't necessarily smack of fraudulent activity or unethical activity. And that's what I want you to try to avoid um, is scam activity. Um, you do want to pay particular attention uh, in the reviews about accusations of fraudulent activities. Um, the school insisted that I pay in cash up front. Uh, they don't issue refunds. Things of that nature. Things that speak of um, shady or strange um, behavior in regard to financial processing or transactions. If the reviews that you're looking up don't satisfy you or kind of answer the question of whether or not this is a shady enterprise, um, a good place to go is the BBB, the Better Business Bureau. Uh, typically, when people have complaints about an establishment that go above just, I wasn't happy with my service, or when people have been victims of actual fraud, um, scams, when they have considered um, legal action against a school or have threatened to sue, um, typically people will go to the Better Business Bureau to file a complaint um, that is a lot more serious than just a bad review. It's an actual complaint with an accrediting association that um, is a business whose entire purpose is to monitor the um, appropriateness of businesses. And so that is usually where people go um, when they've been the victim of something more serious than just like a shitty teacher. So check the Better Business Bureau website for complaints against that business. Another good source of research is other students. When I went to bartending school, this would have been actually pretty difficult for me to do. But in this day and age of social media, it should be really easy to track down a couple of people who have attended the school before. The school itself is likely to have a social media page of some kind, even if it's just Facebook, which means that there are going to be people who tag them, who repost posts from them, um, who uh, check in at their location um, or like their page reach out to those people, send messages to those people and say, hey, I'm thinking of going to such and such bartending school. I think you went there too. What did you think? And finally, the teachers themselves can be a great source of, um, you know, clues about the legitimacy of the bar program. Um, again, using social media, um, it'll probably be fairly easy for you to figure out who teaches at the school. They're likely to be in uh, pictures, teaching courses. Um, they're likely to also be liking, reposting, hashtagging, promoting the school themselves. Um, and so you can reach out to them and find out where they're working. Are they working right now? Are they working at bars that you are familiar with that you can verify and say, okay, I think somebody who works there probably knows what they're doing. Um, so you can go to the teachers. Um, now finding out information about the teachers might be a little bit harder, but a great opportunity to find out more about who's teaching at the school um, is the interview process, which brings me to my next tip, and that is uh, to make sure to ask key questions during the interview process. So before I get into some of the red flags that might come up when you go in for an interview, I first want to explain to you that the reason why I call it an interview is because it's not really an interview, okay? <laughs> like I said before, um, bartending schools are not actual accredited educational institutions. And so they refer to you know the first meeting that you have when you go into the school as an interview because that's what a school would call it um, and they want to try to tie themselves to a school and, and come across as much like an educational institution as possible but at the end of the day a bartending school is a product and a service that is being sold to you that's not necessarily a bad thing 
H&M sells to you every day and you buy their clothes, right? It's not bad to be sold to, but it is important to understand that that's what's happening and that's what they uh, are there for. They're there to sell you their product and their service. And one of the ways that they do that is by pretending like they're interviewing you and like you are the one who has to be considered and qualified uh, to be accepted into the program. I can tell you from experience, after three years of teaching at a bartending school, there is no qualification that you need to take a bartending course aside from having the money to pay for the bartending course, okay? But it is a common sales practice for the school to kind of go through the motions of interviewing you in order to kind of put the pressure on a little bit um, for you to want to show them that you are dedicated to them, that you are serious about moving forward with them uh, so that hopefully you sign up you know, on the spot and pay for it and take the course. So you want to know that first. It's not an interview for real, okay? So the person that you're speaking with is really a salesperson and they are going to try to control the conversation. Um, they're gonna try to ask you a lot of questions to put you on the defensive so that when it comes time to uh, ask you if you're serious about moving forward and if you want to go ahead and enroll in the course now while you have the opportunity, you are more inclined to say, Yes, 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 I'm ready. I, I want to sign up now. I'm ready to enroll. Um, it's just a sales tactic. Tactic? Tactic. <laughs> it's just a sales tactic. So when you go in, if you feel like you're being sold to, you are. And the fact that you are being sold to doesn't mean that the school is a scam, okay? So if you get that, man, they're selling me really hard feeling, that might be annoying because no one really likes to be sold to, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the school is up to anything shady or unethical. So I encourage you to be proactive in the interview. Don't fall into the trap of just sitting and waiting for the next question. Ask your own questions. Take the opportunity when you can to take control of the meeting and ask the questions and get the information that you need to feel comfortable um, about giving these people your money. So as I was mentioning before, if you weren't able in your initial research to get information about the teachers, uh, how long they've been bartending, what bars or restaurants they're currently working in, this is a great opportunity for you to do that in that interview session. So tell me, um, how long do you have to be a bartender in order to teach here? Oh, okay. Um, do the teachers here work at bars and restaurants that I maybe have heard of? What are those? I encourage you to ask to see the instructional space. Ask to see the space where the classes are actually being conducted. So you can see what type of layout is being utilized, how up to date does the bar look, do the tools and the equipment look modern, and do they exist? Uh, you know, can I sit in on a class? Uh, many reputable bartending schools um, actually include a free class sit-in as a part of their sales package. So if they offer that to you, I would definitely take advantage. Um, so there's a lot of information that you can find out in the interview, um, and I encourage you to ask those questions. Aside from that though, there are a couple of uh, red flags that might um, happen in the course of this interview, sales pitch session, um, that um, I would say are reason enough to say mm, something about this isn't quite right. So the first thing is, um, sorry, I don't know if you guys can hear that, it just started pouring which is, thank God, it's like 90 degrees. It's like midnight right now in New York and it's still like 85 degrees. It's disgusting. Um, so I'm happy that it's raining, but it might be loud, so forgive me for that. Um, but uh, one of the biggest red flags uh, is about certification. So to be clear, 
in case you do not know this, you do not need any type of official certification to be a bartender, period. There is no such thing as a bartending license that is issued by any state government or agency the way your driver's license, for example, uh, is issued by a government agency. This is true in all 50 states. Now, it is my understanding that there are a couple of states out there that do have um, certifications that are necessary in order to serve alcohol. And in the states where you do need to have that certification, it is not a bartending school. You're not being taught how to make drinks. You're simply being taught um, how to safely serve people alcohol, how to appropriately monitor alcohol consumption, how to accurately identify when someone has been over served, um, and what to do when that happens um, to prevent any uh, injury, accidents, or liability to your bar or restaurant. Those certifications usually don't take a huge amount of time to complete, and more importantly, they do not take a ton of money. They might even be free. Um, I'm not sure. If anybody works in a state where you are required to get alcohol safety training before you can serve alcohol, please give us all the tea. Give us all the information because 99% of the country uh, do not have any requirements like that, okay? To serve alcohol, you need to be of legal working age and legal to work in that state. That's it. Okay, so I live in New York. To serve alcohol in New York, you need to be 18 years old and you need to be legal to work in the U.S. That is it. There's no test. There's no certain amount of drinks. None of that that you have to learn. And that's essentially the same uh, case in almost all of the states around the country. So if you go into a bartending school or association, and they try to convince you, okay, that you need to be certified or licensed in order to get a job, that's a red flag. Now, I'm kind of forgiving of that one because you know what? Y'all are going to try to sell me in any way you can. So, of course, you're going to try to make me feel like i got to get a certification from you or nobody's going to hire me, okay? I'm not mad at you for trying to make it seem that way. It's on you to press that and say, okay, I know that you don't need certification or license to serve alcohol in this state, but do you guys offer a certificate or something like that? If they still, after you let them know that you know that you don't need to be certified or licensed to get a job. If they still try to convince you that it's needed, that's a red flag to me. Because now you're just lying. Okay? At first, you were just trying to sell me by convincing me that I would be way more employable, way more desirable as an employee if I were certified. You know, which is like, that actually might be true uh, to some extent. But when I tell you that I know that legally I don't need a certificate or a license or a card or anything like that to serve alcohol, and you try to tell me, oh, no, 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 you absolutely do, okay, now you're just lying. So what else is a lie up in here? <laughs> okay, what else are you going to lie to me about, about what your program is or what your program does or what you're going to do with my money, etc.? So that's a red flag to me. The second red flag comes uh, in regard to job placement. And this goes back to what I said earlier about um, reviews and complaints about the job placement program not being good um, is to be taken with a grain of salt. So the way bartending schools usually work is in addition to the course training that you get, the classes, the lessons, the hands-on experience, they typically offer uh, what is called job placement. Um, 
job placement really should be called something else um, because the last thing that any of these schools or associations uh, is going to do is actually place you in a job. That's almost never the case. Um, instead, what happens is when you're done, you will usually be sat down with a job placement coordinator um, whose job it is to help you write your resume, give you pointers on how to conduct yourself at interviews, what to wear, etc. And they will typically also give you access to the school's job database, which you won't have access to until you graduate the program. The job placement database is basically um, a collection of all the job ads uh, that the job placement person could find online, in the newspaper, at the local community center, just anywhere in your area. So they'll go on Craigslist, they'll go on Hari, they'll go on Monster, they'll go on Indeed, LinkedIn, they'll go on all the big sites that people use to find job ads and they'll collect them all and put them into one place for you. They will often also cold call bars and restaurants in the area and say, hey, are you looking for bartenders? Well, we're a bartending school and we have a lot of great graduates and if you're hiring, then you should talk to us. Oh, you are hiring? Oh, let me put you into our database and some of our applicants might come your way. Um, when a bartending school has been around for a while and they start to make a name for themselves, then bars and restaurants might actually call them and say, hey, we know you're a bartending school in the area and you've been around for a while and we need like two or three bartenders soon. It's the start of the summer season. Uh, if anybody good is there, you know, please send them our way. We're happy to interview them, okay? So what they'll do is they'll collect all the information of everybody around who is looking for bartenders, hiring in any capacity, and they'll put it all into one database for you, which is nice. It's really convenient. It's nice to be able to log in and just see all of the job ads that were posted in your area um, that day. It does sometimes happen that bars or restaurants will create relationships with bartending schools and they will tell the bartending school first when they're looking for staff before they pay $45 to post on Craigslist or $100 to post on Hari or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so uh, that is useful to some extent. Um, it can be very useful, especially if you don't have a resume, you don't know what to expect on interviews, and you don't have the time to sit and sift through all of the job ads on every single platform, um, but it's not placement, okay? So if a bartending school or association tries to convince you that when you're done, they're going to place you in a bar, that you are definitely going to be working within one to two weeks of graduating, and they're gonna basically just give you a job, that's a red flag, because it's just not true. I encourage you, if they make it sound that way, for you to press them on that. Oh, or, oh, so when I leave here, you're going to give me a job at a bar. Any reputable bartending school or association will say, oh, no, well, not quite, you know, and, and then they'll continue on with their spiel or whatever. Um, but any bartending school or association that tries to convince you that the day you graduate, they're just gonna like hook you up with a job I would uh, be concerned about. The next red flag to be aware of is upfront payment, okay? In particular, cash payments. Um, if a school or association is only taking cash payments, I, I would just say thank you for your time, goodbye. Um, it, not to say that it's not possible um, for a school or association to only take cash, it just seems it just seems really unlikely to me that that's a legitimate school or association. Now, an individual teaching bartending classes only taking cash, sure, they're just starting out, they're trying to start their own business and they can't afford to pay the, car, uh, the credit card processing or ca uh, check cashing processing fees uh, to take other forms of payment, sure, that's fine. 
but um, an actual like brick and mortar business um, that only takes cash payments uh, would be very concerning to me. It would also be very concerning to me if you have to pay the entire balance up front. Okay? Remember, these schools and associations are trying to mimic real schools as best they can. So think back to when you were in school, if you're not still there. Um, did you have to pay your entire four years of college tuition on your first day? No way, right? Um, not only did you not have to pay for all four years up front, but there was probably also a graduated refund system or a graduated payment system in which you paid for your courses as you go or you paid for your course up front but then were entitled to a percentage of a refund based on how much of the course you finished. If the school doesn't have that and they just require you to pay up front, pay in cash, or if they don't have a process for issuing you a refund in the event that you quit halfway, um, that is concerning to me. So you're going to want to find out how they take payment, how they expect payment, um, and stay away from places that want you to pay up front uh, all at once, that want you to pay all in cash, or that don't have a uh, policy, a written policy, about what circumstances entitle you to a refund. The next red flag uh, is about cost. Um, the cost of bartending school is really varied. It can go anywhere from $200 to up to $1,000. The school that I went to at the time was just shy of $800 for a 40-hour course plus um, lifetime job placement, which just means you, know, you can call into the job placement director or use their database forever. Your password doesn't expire. Uh, that included uh, certain materials like the bar, book, binder, pamphlet, whatever they're using to teach class notes, etc. Maybe flashcards, all of that. The bartending school that I ended up teaching at, their cost was $6.95, uh, so just shy of $700. Now, be mindful if those numbers are scaring you. I do live in New York City. Things here are just pricier all around. But I kind of have a general rule for deciding whether or not the cost of your program makes sense for what you're supposed to be learning. So, um, if the program is less than $200, I would be concerned, okay? There is kind of a minimum threshold here. You do need a reasonable amount of instruction in order for a school type program uh, to be worth it, uh, which means that somebody, the instructor, has to be paid to take you through all of those steps, whether it's the bottles, the space, the tools, the ice, the glassware, um, the overhead, the office personnel, the job placement program person, people in marketing, uh, all of that. They still have to keep the lights on. They have to pay a bunch of people. They have a lot of costs like any other business. And if they're able to get that done on just $200, um, that would be a little strange to me. That kind of smacks of somebody who maybe wants to take my $200 and then not really give me much else in return. That being said, I have a rule of thumb for how much it can cost. Because yes, they gotta pay the bills, they gotta pay the instructors, they gotta provide me with the tools and the resources and the books and the flashcards and all of that, that's absolutely true for sure. But I can't be going into debt off a of bartending school, okay? The whole reason why I'm going is because I need a job and I need to make money. So I can't be like, a, a, a thousand dollars in the hole um, before I've even gotten an interview yet. That's totally unreasonable. So my rule of thumb is a three shift rule. Okay. The course should not cost you much more than you would make in three good shifts behind the bar. If you don't know what bartenders are making in your area, that's a part of your research into whether or not this 
uh, industry, this path is right for you. Um, it's not really hard to do. Go out to your local bar, talk to the bartenders. It's not really like, they're not going to tell you what they made today because none of your business. But is your average bartender going to be able to tell you kind of like what you could expect from a shift somewhere? Probably. Someone will answer the question for you. If you're not sure, you can ask me. <laughs> um, so in New York, we tell new bartenders that you should expect to make anywhere between $150 on an evening weekday shift and $250, even $300 on a weekend shift. So that means, reasonably speaking, I should be looking to make somewhere between $450 and $750. So that means I'm not going to want to pay for a course that costs much more than $750 because I'm going to have to work more than three solid weekend shifts to dig myself out of that hole and that could really set you back if you don't have a lot of money to begin with. The next red flag is about timing. Um, you will hear schools and associations give you a range of time frames that it will take you to complete their course. Um, you'll hear anything from two days, I've heard, to eight weeks, I've heard. Um, both of those are extremes, and both of those are concerning to me, okay? I can tell you, as a working bartender, that you do not need eight weeks of full-time instruction to be able to go out and get a job. And I would be a little bit confused as to what exactly it is that we are covering in all of this time. That being said, a school or association that tells you that they will get you work ready in two days also seems to be, like, very confusing. <laughs> okay? Um, you guys see my channel. Um, you see the videos that I have on it. Um, I tell you guys all the time that there isn't a certain amount of drinks or a certain amount of recipes that you need to know in order to be employable, in order to be uh, capable of getting a bartending job. But that being said, um, even if you just covered the five or six videos in my Basics 101 playlist, if you actually went through those videos, took notes, took quizzes and tests on that material, had to study, first of all, to take the quizzes and tests, and then took quizzes and tests on that material, and then also practiced all of the things that you learned, you would already need more than just two days. Um, covering that kind of material, even if you're doing it in a hands-on environment, is not going to go much faster than that. So I would be very concerned um, about anybody that told you that they could get you up and running in a matter of a few days. The appropriate time frame for bartending courses is somewhere between 16 to 20 hours for like a very basic cocktail waitress course, like a course that just covers the basics of uh, terminology, tools, and techniques, and that just touched on the most popular drinks, you know, maybe the 10 or 15 most popular drinks that are going to be ordered that you need to be familiar with. Um, a full 40 hour course will go through a lot more of the nitty gritty, um, will cover far more drink recipes, perhaps 100, even 200 drink recipes, and will also include time for you to get behind the bar and practice making those drinks. You just couldn't get all of that. You couldn't get even just the 16 to 20 hour version. Uh, no matter how you worked it, reasonably you could not squeeze that into just like two or three days. So those are the red flag topics um, that can come up or that you can try to cover um, in the you know interview um, first meeting process. And my final tip is do not decide 
uh, on the spot. So after you come in for this interview, you ask your questions, they ask you uh, their questions, you see the space, you ask about the teachers, uh, you ask the questions about the red flag topics. Um, whether you get um, satisfactory answers to these questions or not, um, just don't decide on the spot, okay? They are, because again, this is their job, they're selling a product or service, they are going to try to get you to commit to them right away. Because if you walk out the door, there's a really good chance that you're going to go to the bartending school down the street and have a similar meeting and you might enroll with them. But realize that there is no other reason to sign up with them right away than that. Okay, so they might tell you that there's a sale going on or enrollment is only a certain amount of students or they're only signing people up for a limited time. Again, these are all just sales techniques that they are using to try to encourage you to sign up with them and not get sucked in by another bartending school. But at the end of the day, uh, if you call them back a week from now, two weeks from now, a month from now and say, you know what, I'd like to move forward, I wanna come in and pay for my first class and get signed up and start my classes, they're not gonna say, oh no, uh, we cannot do that, no, you know. Maybe there was a sale and it's not quite the same price, that's a possibility, but at the end of the day, um, you're really not running the risk of like not being able to take the class if you decide to go ahead and take a day to think about it. And I encourage you to take a day and think about it. Go home, give it a thought, maybe do some additional research if there's anything that came up in the interviews um, that you are still scratching your head about um, and give yourself the time to feel confident that this isn't a scam. Again, the question of whether or not it's worth it in the first place has to do with you and what type of student you are, what type of learner you are, and whether or not a classroom style environment is good for you in the first place. So go home, give yourself some time to think about it, and when you feel ready, go ahead and sign up for that course. Okay, rock stars, if you found this video helpful or if you just liked it, make sure to go ahead and click on the thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them for me down below. And of course, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Make sure to click on the bell button so you're notified every time a new video comes out. Follow me on Instagram, at rockstar underscore bargirl. And please, please check out my website, therockstarbargirl.com. The reviews are in for my um, master class course one, The Fundamentals Every Bartender Must Know. And the students who have taken the course so far are really, really happy with it. So I encourage you to head over to the website and check it out. Remember, I also have free videos there and a custom 16-piece toolkit, the Rockstar Bar Kit, um, which is every tool I think a beginning bartender needs to have. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, Rockstars. Rockstar.